As we all know, the scientific or the Latin names of many species, especially of herptiles, which is involving reptiles, amphibians, invertebrates, and sometimes fish, can be very difficult to pronounce. A lot of people have a lot of trouble pronouncing those things. But if you actually look down at the roots and break them down, what they mean in Latin, it actually makes a lot of sense in most cases. For instance, Pichuophus melana lucus, melana is black, lucus, white, it's a black and white snake, it makes sense. And a lot of times that's what it breaks down to. And then other, and then that's usually happens to be the first part of the name and the second part of the name sometimes has to do with their location or other, or other attributes that they show, or sometimes it's named after specific researchers or biologists. For instance, the Dumeril's bow or the Dumeril eye. That's named after a well-known historic French biologist that quite a few different species were named after. But as time and history moves forward and society as a whole grows, we've started to find more creative things that we've started to name these new species that were being newly reclassified or newly discovered. So today I'm gonna to tell you about five really cool species that are named after more historically or socially creative names more than just an old European biologist. And to start things off with, I'm going to tell you about a really cool spider that's named after a pretty famous country musician. So, if you go down to Southern California and you drive out into the desert near a particularly famous prison, you will find, and I'm not going to try to butcher its name, so I'm going to put it right here, the Johnny Cash Tarantula. That's right. This little five to six inch desert terrestrial North American tarantula is found almost exclusively around Folsom Prison, named after the really famous song that Johnny Cash performed, Folsom Prison Blues. And in addition to that, there's another thing that makes this a really cool, interesting spider of not only being near Folsom Prison, why they decided to name this species after this amazing musician and performer, Johnny Cash. And that actually the two species, ignore the cat as usual, that they're actually sexually dimorphic. In addition to most tarantulas with females usually being a little bit larger and males having different, you know, sexual mature features once they hit their final molt, that's actually a different color. The females look more traditionally like a lot of desert tarantulas, kind of like an earthy brown. The males, however, sometimes are very, very dark brown to almost black and in some cases actually black. And as we all know, we always wondered why Johnny Cash wears black. Well, here's another example as to why they decided to go with this. As a lot of scientists have started to try to reclassify different species of North American tarantulas as separate, but they have a hard time because they all look very similar. And so they're starting to try to classify them based on a little bit more distinguishing features as well as geographic locations, but they haven't done a whole lot of genetic testing yet. So right now we're just going to stick with Johnny Cash Eye, the awesome Folsom Prison Blues Black Tarantula. Next up, and I actually did talk about this one in a video last year. There was a study that concluded in 2021 that did a study over a large portion of the Western Ghats, which is a mountain range in India, where they discovered quite a few new species of reptiles. And in particular, they discovered 12 new species of day geckos. Now these day geckos aren't related to the ones found in Madagascar and other places that belong to the Feliusoma genus. These ones are a little bit different. They are diurnal, but they don't have the little sticky pads. And one of these species in particular was very hard to capture and document and photograph. It was incredibly nimble and agile. And so scientists decided to name this new little gecko after a particularly nimble and agile person, Jackie Chan. That's right, this is the Jackie's Day Gecko, or, because I'm just gonna butcher the first genus name, here it is as usual, and I'm probably gonna keep doing that for most of this video for all these species. It's a really cool little gecko. They don't get very large, usually staying right under two inches long. Then it's a diurnal active day gecko that moves around hunting insects. And it's a really, really cool kind of homage to the wonderful performances of Jackie Chan. And in fact, there's more than one species named after Jackie Chan. There's even a species of wasp as well. Back in 2012, in the forests of Ecuador in a montane rainforest streams, they discovered two new species of frog belonging to the genus Hylocertus. And one of these two species looks very distinguished. It's almost a dark black covered in orange spots. 
And the area that they were found is an area that is highly, highly affected by the chytric fungus epidemic that is just wiping out so much of the world's amphibian populations. Sorry about that. And in particular, the Amphibian Arc, which is the organization that is working to try to breed in essentially the closest we can get to kind of clean rooms, species of amphibians. So that way, if chytrid fungus wipes out populations of them after the fungus has essentially hopefully dissipated in that area, it can be re reintroduced back so we still have these species in the future. And the Amphibian Arc decided to name one of these two frogs after a person, albeit a little controversial to some, has done quite a bit of conservation research, especially at the time. And so that's why this one dark black frog with the orange spots is named after Prince, then Prince Charles III. So this is the Prince Charles Hill Stream Frog, or the Prince Charles Stream Frog, or the Prince Charles Frog. Eh, common names. Now, again, a little controversial some, but then Prince Charles actually was the head of the World Wildlife Fund UK and did head up and spearhead several rainforest conservation and preservation groups. So the amphibian arc decided to name this particular frog after some of the, at the time, very recent conservation efforts that they had. This next one is another one of the 12 species of day geckos that was rediscovered or newly discovered in 2021 in the Western Ghats. So this is in the same genus as the Jackies or the Jackie Chan gecko. This one isn't actually named after a person, but it's named after a character from a very famous book series. And this little gecko is dark gray with little black spots. And so scientists, especially during the time, because it was a couple years ago, it was still a little bit at the height of its popularity, decided to name this gecko after the Game of Thrones dragon, Balerion the Dread, and I think I pronounced that right. I haven't watched the TV series, and I don't think that dragon is actually in the series, but he's in the books, but they decided to name Balerion the Dread, this black dragon from the Game of Thrones book series, after this little gray this and black spotted decay gecko. It's really cool, and it is always kind of fun when we see these little kind of cultural references also referenced in other parts of the world and other parts of different little subcultures. I saved this last one for last because I always like to end on a high note. Now this one goes back to 1990 where a outdoorsman and ecologist and conservationist named Bob Irwin and his son were fishing in a river in northern Queensland in Australia. Now they were fishing but they actually reeled in a, a little turtle. I say little, it was a decent sized, good looking turtle that looked a little odd. It was a female and it had a really pale head. It was like lacking pigment on parts of its head. They found later that the male doesn't look like that. And so they sent it off to a friend of theirs, a biologist to confirm whether or not it was in fact a new species and it was. And so they decided to name this sexually dimorphic new species of river turtle after Bob Irwin's son the soon-to-be and already gaining quite a bit of fame and momentum for himself, Steve Irwin. The Steve Irwin. So this is the Irwin's River Turtle or the Irwin's Turtle. Now, as I mentioned, it is sexually dimorphic. It lacks pigment on its head, but only on the females. There's kind of a weird gene that they have that does do that. They don't all look exactly the same, but it's just kind of a weird thing about them. In addition to being named after the Steve Irwin, they do in fact have another little bit of a claim to fame that seems to be fairly well known. And that is like several other species of aquatic or semi-aquatic turtle, they can actually breathe underwater through a process called respiration, where they actually will absorb water through their cloaca and through a process of kind of like a gill-like membrane, will actually absorb and separate the oxygen from the hydrogen molecules and be able to breathe underwater. So it can take in, the, uh, take in oxygen and then get rid of the water. So it's a really cool and interesting little turtle. I know I didn't do the best job explaining respiration or at least as scientifically accurate as I can, but that's essentially what that process is. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. It's always fun and always interesting to see these kind of cool little tidbits here and there about all these really cool species of animals that are inhabit our world that can be interlocked so that way hopefully other people outside of the herpetological and conservation and animal world can also enjoy these animals. Again, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, 
please let me know. Hit me up in email, questions, comments, concerns down below in the comments. As always, I'll always take whatever uh, thoughts or videos that you'd like to see me talk about or anything like that. Please let me know. Hope everyone's having a great day and we'll check you next time.